Good afternoon and welcome to the first ever live at the Lamex pre-match show. Doing build up to Borough's Big League 2 game at home against Walsall. Now my name is Matt Farley and on today's show we have a really special guest. This guest is a Borough legend. Now where to start about this Borough legend? This Borough legend has 502 appearances, making him the record appearance holder at the football club. He was also heavily involved in the most successful team in the history of the football club, winning back-to-back potions from the conference to League One. He also has two FA Trophy winners medals to his name and was the first captain to lift a competitive trophy at the new Wembley Stadium. He's also had a testimonial rewarded to him at the football club and since moving on from the football club has been an integral part of the academy and is currently at Billericay Town FC. You've probably guessed who it is by now. A massive welcome to Borough Legend, Ronnie Henry. Ronnie, welcome, mate. Thanks, very much. Thanks for having me here. Um, really good introduction there. And it's, um, <laughs> I was just saying to you off air just now, it looks a lovely day for football here. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's really good to have you here, mate. And we've got to ask, of course, how has it been back at the Lamex, mate? Because you must have so many amazing memories here. Oh, it's, it's outstanding. I, I, I love this place, as you know. I mean, I, I've been here for a long, long time. Um, it's unfortunate, obviously, that a lot of the fans are at home at the moment watching this, but um, hopefully we'll uh, be back here soon to watch, to watch your team and push them up the league. Um, it's a fantastic time for me to be here. Like I said, I mean, I'm normally with the 18s on the weekend, but they have no game today. And um, as it's unfortunate that my season at Billericay has been um, been cancelled, so to come along into here today has been been special. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, Freddie. Now, obviously, the team this season are currently 21st place with 32 points. It's been a crazy season on and off the pitch. How do you think the team are doing this season? Listen, it's been it's been tough, hasn't it? Uh, Without a doubt, it was a it was a quite a poor start. I'm sure I'm sure Revs will Revs will be honest about that. But it's it's fantastic that the football club really have stuck stuck with him because managers these days they don't really get time, and and he's he's turning it around to be honest with you. And so are the lads. Um, if they can keep going the way they are, I'm sure they're going to move up the league. Yeah, it's really good stuff. Now, obviously, recently we've had some cracking away for winning a few away games. What are you expecting from the team today in the big game? Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. They're, they're, they're confident. I've watched the last, the last games on, on the iFollow and, and some fantastic results. We don't really concede too many goals. Mm. Uh, we're starting to score some goals as well, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm expecting a win today, to be honest with you, mm. yeah. after the recent form. Yeah, and lastly, Alex Ravel, you know Rez very well, a friend, a colleague at the football club. Again, he's had an absolute crazy year on and off the pitch. With everything that's going on, how well has he done as manager in his first year? Rev's a good friend of mine. I mean, I think it was a, a year in charge the other week, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I saw, and um, he's had a he's had a, a year a year to remember. To be honest with you, it's been really tough for him to come in as a manager at this this football club and any any place with the situation that's going on outside at the moment. He's doing really well um, with with the management staff that he's got and 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 the players he's got, the players he's brought in uh, in the window. They they seem to be gelling really well, and uh, it looks like. Looks like they're finally getting yeah. to where they should be. Yeah, really good to hear, Ronnie. Now, we've just been speaking about Alex Ravel. On Tuesday, it was his first year anniversary in management with the football club, and he celebrated with a massive 1 0 win away at Crawley. What a way to go. Now, Alfie Dinsey was fortunate enough to get a few minutes with Alex Ravel earlier today to talk about the one year in management and also today's big game. Alex Ravel, thank you for joining me. Just over a year in charge. How do you reflect on your time as manager of Stevenage Football Club? Uh, it's been uh, turbulent at times. I think that um, you know I've, I've enjoyed it. I think that taking over when I did was was, was difficult. Um, you know, we had a it was a real difficult time last season, um, and we tried to obviously put into place some of the things that I really felt were, were important in terms of the group, but. Um, ultimately, in the two games that we had, we 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 it was a, it, we struggled at times. So, obviously, then obviously the pandemic hit us, um, and obviously the uncertainty throughout the summer was was, was really tough. Uh, as a first time manager, having to organise you know furlough, organising um, you know Zoom classes and Zoom to keep the players going because of obviously not knowing what was going on. So. And then obviously in the summer, having to release the players that we had to was, 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 was a big decision, but it was one that we needed to do. So that was probably my biggest kind of challenge really was, was that. But I felt like I always knew where we wanted to go. 
uh, within the group and, and having the right characters and the right players in, in the building was always going to be really important. So, um, you know, throughout the summer it was, it was tough, but obviously when we got given the news, it was, it was, a, it was real, really exciting. And um, we always knew that the recruitment in the summer was, was for, for both. Um, and probably as a as a manager, I didn't realise the the level in terms of consistency. You know those players that we signed, they have to consistently perform, and that's not no fault of their own. It's just through you know the standards that are having set in football league. So, you know we 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 scraped around results at times, and we started the season really well, but you know just fell away slightly. But I've always felt we were close, um, and then obviously now being able to recruit players that have experience and a coach that's had a real huge amount of experience has really helped me as a, as a person, as a manager, learn and, and obviously now we find ourselves in a, in a much better place. Uh, for me, still learn every day, still learn off the people around me, the players, uh, the people above me. Um, so I'm learning every day, but I found it really exciting. If you were to take it all the way back to when you retired, then became um, coach at the, at the academy, you wouldn't have expected this this turn of events in eighteen months' time. No chance. I, I you know, I I took the decision to retire, um, and obviously speaking to to Robbie, I, it was and, and working with Ronnie with the 18s was was perfect for me. It was a, it was where we could learn and I could you know try out ideas and and really kind of focus on the things I felt like I wanted to achieve. So, and obviously within a couple of months getting called up to the first team, it's. It, it was quick. It happened. It happened really quickly. But uh, sometimes they, they, it does happen. It, it wasn't the plan at all. You know, the plan for me was to learn. So I felt like you have to always learn. You have to learn on the job, and you have to, you know, you have to, you have to give the hours to get to the top. And um, and ultimately, I probably learned more being up here. You know, from from looking around and, and seeing the environment and learning more and more about as a manager what, what it takes in terms of what, what group you need um, and learning off different people. So, and all of a sudden you find yourself, you know, within, within you know, a couple of months at the top. Um, but ultimately it's something that I always like a challenge. I love challenges. I love, I love um, you know, tough jobs. And I also, I also love kind of proving people wrong. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy that side of it. So. Um, like I say, it, it was a whirlwind, but now I feel like I've kind of, you know, come a long way in terms of personal and and obviously in the way that I manage. But I've still got a long, long way to go. Looking ahead to the future, as as the squad continues to grow, continues to learn, how far can this team go? I, th I think that the ultimately we've we've obviously since since January we've really tried to play a, a, a different way, and um, the players that we obviously brought in. Um, have helped us with that. We we've come a long way in a short space of time. The players are learning every day. They 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 really work hard to to take on board what's asked of them every day. And whether it be a passing deal, whether it be a possession, whether it be a game, you know that that's what they try to do. And there's a it's a really good group, and that comes from choosing the right characters. Um, I believe that obviously for us as a club, we've got to have you know real consistency with the players. We've got to have clarity on on the future for them so that they know that they're here to grow with us as well um, you know we've got the training ground you know everything here is, is is really already in place and it's just about having a real clear plan and a group of players that grow um, and I believe we, we're starting to get that now um, and it's really exciting for me to be honest you know we know that this year is is critical you know to to make sure we carry on improving our results and, and, and win more games than we lose and make sure we get as high up as the table as we can um, but obviously we have to also keep one on, on on the next year as well because you know ultimately we, we want to plan for the future and um, as long as we take care of the now then hopefully we can do that now great stuff there from Alex Ravel as we can see the players have made their way onto the Lamex turf for the warm-up. Now, Ronnie, are there any players that uh, you're looking forward to seeing play today? To be honest with you, there's quite a few special players out there that he's, he's put together as a team, but a couple that stick out in my mind is, um, is Norris, the forward. Um, I mean, I've played against him quite a few times, and he's a, he's a handful on his day. Yeah. Uh, a player that can score goals and also bring players into, into the game um, yeah. with his strength. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. But... Probably, probably most of all, um, Tom Pett, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, a good yeah. friend of mine and uh, 
a colleague and um, a really good lad and, and a good footballer. So yeah. he, on his day, he can make things tick and he can, he can get us going forward. So I'm looking forward to seeing Tom. Tom really play. He's a special player. We mm. were talking just a little while ago mm. about Terence. He's he's done very well to keep Scott Cup out really well, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, and Scott is a very good footballer, and mm. to be to be keeping him out of the team, he must be doing well. So I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing seeing him play. He's very comfortable on the ball. Yeah. Looks to play out from the back, and um, it's been a stop start career here for him at mm. Steenage. But hopefully now he can get a really good run and do well. Yeah. Now, as you can see, he's going to play that for that means that we're not long till kickoff. We're nearly 15 minutes away. So, to be able to watch today's game, you need to make sure that you buy an I Follow video match pass. Now, if you're a season ticket holder, season ticket holders get this free. So, all you need to do, log into your account, go to Match Day Live, hit Watch Now. If you're a non-season ticket holder, create an account if you already haven't done so. Log in live match day centre and hit watch now. It's £10. That's a bargain to watch Barry League 2. So get on there, make sure you buy it. Also, for people watching this live YouTube platform, make sure you get your Borough predictions in on the comment section. Me and Ronnie are going to be going through the predictions at the end. Also, get your questions in for Ronnie on the comment section too. I will be posting some questions to Ronnie. So if you have any questions, make sure you get them in. Now, recently, it's been a really hectic week on the road for Baba. We've had three away games in quick succession. We've seen some crazy wins. The team posted their first win away from home this season. We've had the big win away at Grimsby, away at Tranmere, and on Tuesday night in the huge win away at Crawley. We're going to take a look at some of those highlights and some of those last-minute goals. Key instrument in the middle of the park in this first half, although there's a chance at the other end. Suddenly, Elliot List is in behind, and Elliot List breaks the deadlock. Right before half time, Stephen Edge after weathering the storm. A deal of things made in the middle of the park, and there's suddenly a chance in behind, and the substitutes in on goal and tucked it away. Stefan Payne. Alex Ravel will be so frustrated to have conceded so late in such a big game. But there's a chance at the other end of the pitch. Oh my goodness! A 95th minute winner for the visitors. As soon as they fell behind and lost their advantage in this game, they suddenly strike almost instantly. And Stevens does the job at the right end of the pitch and tucks it away. Norris. Makes way. Any real rush, Danny Newton. Gone in his place. And somewhat find a match winning moment in the time that remains. Newton, first involvement for him is still Newton! What an impact! On the pitch for a matter of seconds! And he may well have got Stevenage, the most unlikely of wins. It was a bullet of a strike. Just look at that. Stevenage on the front foot again. List. It's the path now of Osborne. Head down, Elliot Osborne shapes onto his strong right. Back on his left, then on his right. And that is wonderful from Elliot Osborne. Is that the match winner at the People's Pension Stadium? What a strike! Plenty of red shirts in the box. Give and go on the edge. Is that a foul? Yes, it is, I think. And that is a penalty. Reed fouling Maguire Drew inside the 80. And their man Tom Nichols for parity. It's Nichols who goes with power. And David Stockdale saves it. A big moment in West Sussex tonight. The former Brighton keeper goes up the road to maybe secure all three points for Stevenage tonight. Now, great to see some of those Borough away wins. My God, isn't it brilliant to see Borough start winning away from home, which is superb. Now, Ronnie, some really good goals there. Uh, what's your favourite goals out of those little montages? They're not just really good goals. I think they're really important goals. I mean, um, picking up a lot of points to move us up the league. Yeah. Um, I'm really pleased with the, uh, the Elliot Osborne goal. Uh, 
because he deserves it because we've had him in the 23s um, recently and he's a really good lad and he works really hard so he deserved that goal and it was a, it was a touch of class he, he did mean that goal going on to the Danny Newton goal we were just talking about that just <laughs> you now. know Newt's really well didn't you I know Newt's really well and, um, <laughs> I question whether he meant it but he, he definitely he definitely meant that one it was a, it was a great finish for him and um, a really big goal from as well as a Stevens goal at Grimsby yeah. in the last minute with a tap in but um, I'll have to go the, the, the best one out the three for quality was Osborne but my friend Newt's to be honest with you with the volley I, I'll give it to him yeah and we were just saying all in the last 10 minutes as well so you know the team that you get that goal well, that's, that's the case, isn't it? With you, with the team not really conceding many goals, so they always give them a ch give themselves a chance in the last ten minutes to get a goal, and you're always going to get yep. chances in whatever league you're in in the last ten minutes, yep. as long as the the team can keep keep to a minimum goals the other end. Yeah. You're always going to win games. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree, Ronnie. Now, we have got some predictions. I'm really quickly just going to read some out because you guys are going crazy on these predictions. So, Ronnie, we're going to go through some of these. So, Josh Cooper has gone for a 2 0 Bama win. Pet and Norris the score. How do you think about that? Pet and Norris on the score sheet today? It could, could well happen with the, with the form. Like I said, a 2 0 win, scoring a couple of goals and a clean sheet. Hopefully, we get a clean <laughs> sheet here. We were just saying that we also haven't. Um, kept a clean sheet away from home this season have they so yeah, yeah, could yeah. well happen yeah really like that uh, we've got another prediction Mark Nimmo has gone for 2-0 Borough Mark that is the positivity we want to see fantastic Dave has also gone at 2-1 Borough the brutal way has gone at 2-1 Borough as well and we've also got a prediction from Liam Sharp 2-1 Borough and John Todd 2-0 Borough so Ronnie it does sound like it seems to be a common thing 2-0 2-1, all, all, all seems to be coming together, doesn't it, which is well, nice. Well, that's it. I mean, 2-1 will be a fantastic result. Personally, I'm going for 1-0, really, Norris. You're going for 1-0? for 1-0, Norris, oh, yeah. Um, I'd back that. Uh, we'll, we'll take that all day. A win, a win anyway would be great, but uh, yeah. I'm going 1-0. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Now, on to Scott Cuthbert. Now, the Borough scheme, unfortunately, has been out the last month due to injury. But, great news, Scotty made a return in the week where he came on in the last five minutes to push the team over the line with that huge 1-0 win at Crawley. Now, luckily, Alfie Dinsey has been able to grab a few minutes with Scott Cuthbert earlier today to talk about the team's running form and also how Scotty's been doing on the sidelines. Scott Cuthbert, nice to talk to you. Feels like it's been a while. Um, first of all, how are you feeling? Are you fit? Are you ready to go? Yeah, um, I've just had an issue with my, with my hamstring. Had a previous operation around about eight or nine years ago, and it's, it's a little issue that just keeps popping up every now and then. So I've I've kind of been dealing with it for since about November. So it's been a little bit frustrating to be to be coming in and out the way I have been the last um, the last few weeks. But yeah, no, it's it's getting there. It's getting slowly but surely. It's it's getting there, and I'm I'm happy to be to be back involved in the squads. Yeah, and being out on the sidelines, you you've been watching the the games on I follow. How has that been from a Almost watching it from a fan's point of view. Yeah, it's not the same. You know, even when you're, uh, you know, even when you're injured, I try my I try my best to travel to the games, even if they're home or away. Try and get myself on the bus or, or come to the home games and support the lads as, as best you can. So even just missing that, you know, due to the, you know, the protocols that are in place, I can't even go to the home games. So it's, it's frustrating. But um, you know, certainly, you know, there's still lots of ups and downs in the games. You know, like we talk about the the, the Grimsby game, but equalising late on and then you know getting the getting the last minute goal so there's been plenty of drama anyway to, to you know to keep us busy how do you keep, cope with the nerves going into those those dying few minutes where all the action happens and you the um what well, when i'm watching it I just try not and re refresh my phone not look at my phone not look at anything just sit there it's hard when i've got when i've got two kids running about my feet as well i've got a five-year-old and a one-year-old running about wanting to play and i've got one dressing up and the other one throwing his bottle about and doing all sorts and I'm trying to concentrate on the game so it's, a, it's it's an eventful 90 minutes that's for sure but now you said you're, you're back fit how do you how do you look forward to the to the rest of the season I think over I think probably since December our form's been been superb we've um, you know we've put in some fantastic performances and got some really big results for the, for the football club so it's an exciting period I think there's 17 18 games to go um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to picking up more points and jumping up that table. You know, we've went from we've went from being maybe one game away from slipping into the bottom two to to being one win away to going probably twelfth. Um, that's how tight it is, and that's how well we've done in, in recent weeks. And it's just important for us now that we, 
you know, we carry on that form and with the games coming as thick and as fast as they can Saturday, Tuesday, then it's a real opportunity for us to to jump up that table because we know we've got the quality in the squad to, to do that. From a player's point of view and especially a club captain's point of view, what do you put that um, turn of form down to? I th- you know, we've got a bit more belief now. I think the managers, the manager and the coaching staff have had a little bit of time to, you know, to put their ideals into into place. If you, you know, don't forget, it was a brand new squad in the summer. We came back, we didn't know what league we were going to be in, and people could say that you know can use that as an excuse, saying that we're using it as an excuse or whatnot. But that's that's the fact. You know, we, we didn't know what league we'd be in. Um, the, it's always going to take time for the new players to, to settle in. It's always going to take time for the the manager and the coaches to get their messages across on how on how they want us to play. And you know, by the time November December comes round, you, you'd be likely to see some some type of form on the on the pitch and us getting results. And that's exactly what's happened. So it's just taking a little bit of time for everyone to settle down and all the players to find their feet and be comfortable in the, the system and you know the day to day training and stuff. And it you know, obviously. It's the, you know, the results speak for themselves. It's it's working working well at the moment, and it's something that certainly the players want to to continue to go into this uh, run of games. And as I'm sure you're aware, the the Gaffer passes one year anniversary of being in charge of the club. You've played with him, and now you've played under him. How what, how does that work going from a, from your teammate to now your manager? Yeah, yeah, he's my manager. You know, I have to respect the fact that, that he's my manager. He's um. He calls the shots. He makes the decisions, and that's just that's just one of those things. When you become a man, become a manager, you need to, as a player, you need to understand that. I'm not the only one that's that's played und- that played with the gaffer as a teammate. There's a few lads here, so yeah, you know, it's been it's been good. Um, he's brought in some some good coaching staff as well, and he's brought in a real good a real good spirit about the place as well this season. You know, you've got lads in here. I keep repeat. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but. You know the lads in here. They, they care about the football club. They care about results. They want to do well, and um, I think that shows on the pitch. Great to hear from Barmer skipper Scott Cuthbert there. Now, Ronnie, you've been a captain at the club yourself, and obviously Scott Cuthbert is currently captain. How good is Scott as a captain and as a leader, and as someone that you know you're in the same position? Scott, you've been a captain before. How, how good is he? Very good, very good. I mean, we're just just now, I was just having a laugh with Scotty going off. He's a he's a tremendous. That just shows everything about him. He's not in the he's not in the starting eleven today, and he's still um, getting the lads going on in in the warm up. He's still having a laugh, and he still really wants them to win. And I just said it's it's, it's tough when you're not playing, but he seems to be in the right mindset. And when he's needed, like yeah. at the at Crawley to come on and and see the team through, he's he does that. I mean, mm. it's a great honour to be a captain of any football club, especially this one. I was captain for many years, mm. but um, with when I was captain, we had we had so many leaders in the change room. It was very easy for me, yeah. um, and I'm sure that's how Scott's feeling at the moment. There's plenty of um, League Two, League One experience in there, so it's probably easy for him. Yeah, really good to hear, Ronnie. Now, luckily, we have got loads of questions for Ronnie now, so we're going to have a little bit of a Q and A with Ronnie, and we're going to ask some of your questions that you've put in the comment section. Now, Ronnie, we've got quite a few, mate, so we're going to try and get through these as quick as possible. Now, Callum Jackson has asked, who was the toughest player you came up against? Uh, I've been asked that a few times. I got asked that a few weeks ago from one of the youth team players. Um, the, the standout name name for you guys would probably be Bale, but he wasn't the toughest in my eyes. The toughest night I had, and it was here, against uh, Arnautovic. Mm. Uh, yeah. Cracking player, right? a very, very good player. Strong, quick. Yeah. Um, can do amazing things when he wants to. He just um, obviously went off the rails quite a bit sometimes. But he he gave me a, a tough night here against Stoke that evening. He's um, he's one of the toughest players I've come up against. I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, really good answer, uh, Sam Cretton. I love this question from Sam. Sam has asked your favourite game for Borough. That's a toughie. There's been we was just saying there's been so many so many fantastic games I mean my testimonial was probably one of my best games um, for, for family reasons and family history it probably has to be the the away leg at, at White Hart Lane uh, that yeah. evening the, I know it was a 3-1 loss wasn't it but it was yeah. um, for the family reason from a grandfather being at Spurs for so long 
me being at Spurs as a pro, mm. um, to go back to White Hart Lane where I didn't quite make it was a, mm. was a special evening, but there was so many, mm. there's so many, yeah. but that one was for me was really good. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, another really good question from Big Ricey, love the name Big Ricey. Uh, Big Ricey has asked, what's your favourite Stevenage team to play in? Because you've played in so many different Stevenage teams, what was your favourite? What one to eleven, or you are you asking me the the, the team that the, the team that was was most successful really the ones yeah I mean uh, the, you all know the play the, when we had players like myself yeah. Roberts Laird yeah. Boswick Ashton Daisy yeah. Messino Beardsley yeah. even players like Stacey Long that didn't play all the games they were so good Darius yeah they yeah. they yeah. them you you knew week in week out you was going to go out and even if we did lo did lose the game the, the other team knew they was in. They had a game, you know what I mean? It was, it was a tough team to play against. And anyone you I speak to nowadays that played against that team, they, they really did think oh, it was going to be a tough game. So I knew for a fact we wasn't really gifted on the football, everyone, but we knew yeah. for a fact if one of us got beaten, someone was behind us to, to mop it up. So that that was a team for me that was a, it was really enjoyable to play in. Yeah, real togetherness. Last question, Ronnie. Um, this is from Hayden Horstead. And Hayden has asked, who was the best team you played against? It's another cracking question. The best team we played against has, has, has been has been has been loads of teams we've played against, but um, it's the, Spurs, the Spurs team away away yeah. uh, the three one win. I mean, I know they they were the, on on paper they they were the best team. I mean, I remember going into that change room that night mm. and thinking they're going to put a weakened team out, and then I see the I see the, the starting eleven that they put yeah. out, and I thought. I mean, you get nervous for any game, especially that one. It was a full house, and the, yeah. the amount of stars they had in that team. I mean, Defoe, Adibor up front. I mean, we was in for a night, and um, that's probably the toughest team I've ever, I've ever faced, to be honest with you. Yeah, Ronnie, fantastic. Thank you so much for some of those questions. Now, as we can see, players are making their way out onto the Lamix pitch, which means the pre-game show is nearly over. Uh, Ronnie Henry, thank you so much for Thanks joining me today. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've loved it. I'm looking forward to it as well. It's yeah. It's a bit different without the fans here, but I'm sure um, I'm sure it's going to be a good game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, yeah. And we need to get you back on again, I think, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? It's been good. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Ronnie, thank you so much. Now, thank you to all the listeners and watchers on the YouTube Live platform today. We will be back in a couple of weeks' time to pre-game show of Barra's Big League 2 game at home against Forest Green Rovers. Again, as you can see, the players are coming out onto the turf, so you know what to do. If you haven't bought an iFollow match pass, quickly go and do that now so you're in the front row seat to watch Barra's Big League 2 game at home against Walsall today. My name has been Matt Farley. You have been watching live at the Lamex. Come on the Barra.